Do you like Christmas in April? Yeah, I kind of do too. So I got a tactic just for you. Let's check it out. Unfortunately, webcam I'm having issues with, as you can see, we're kind of packing in the back. Uh, but we have a Christmas tree type formation, a kind of a wide Christmas tree. This is the Killer 4321 by Prince. Uh, there actually is some steam information, which is good to see. It does say that this tactic works wonders against any team and any tactic. It focuses on solid defense, quick ball retention, and fast attacking play with a lot of killer balls through or over opponent's defense. They have This person has apparently gone completely undefeated so far. So far, zero losses this season. Not the most goal-scoring tactic out there, but it does get the job done pretty well. So, it has some information. Fantastic to see. Uh, we're going to see how it does for the teams if you haven't seen already, but this is the tactic. So you have a sweeper keeper in attack the way that people love to do. Fullbacks on support on both sides. Ball playing defender on the left in defense. Central defender on the right. A DM in support centrally. A wide playmaker on attack on both sides. Two shadow strikers on both sides. And then an advanced forward up front on attack. You can see custom gag and press, mentality is positive, in possession, attacking with is fairly narrow, approach play pass into space, uh, play out of defense, passing directness is slightly shorter, tempo is higher, final third, mixed crosses, high, uh, hit early crosses, and then dribble less. In transition, counter press, counter, distribute quickly, distribute to the fullbacks and the center backs, and take short kicks. And then out of possession, a high press line of engagement, higher defensive line, much more uh, trigger press much more often and prevent short goalkeeper distributions. I'm guessing nothing here. Nope, nothing as usual. I will say, table-wise, it does not look too bad. You can see Newcastle in third in Champions League spots with 69 points. I'll give you that. It was not a very high, uh, high point tally on all teams, but Tottenham in fifth with 65, so not too far off uh, Newcastle in third. And Wolves in 12, 43, not good at all. Uh, you definitely want more from Wolves. Newcastle, the placement at least is fantastic. Point tally, yeah, it's not too bad. I mean, it's pretty much on the higher end of what Newcastle is usually bringing. Schedule-wise, you could see they did start off a little bit better than they finished off in, uh, in September and October. But you have a nice round of wins. You have Leicester, one all penalty loss in the EFL Cup second round. You continue on with the FA Cup, though. There you go. Well, it didn't even start there. But FA Cup, one all draw. You actually lose out in the third round replay. I take that back. One all penalty yet again. Uh, and you're out of everything. But, I mean, it's overall, it's very spotty. You definitely can pick up, you know, a West Brom win. Um, an Aston Villa win, I would hope. A Tottenham win, maybe, or at least draw. Uh, but 1-0 against Everton. 0-2. Uh, well, 6 nil or 1-6. That is awful to see. Tottenham's schedule has a lot more green to it, which is interesting to see. Uh, you continue on to Marseille, 5-2. Nice win there. Moving on to the Champions League. Moving on to the EFL Cup third round. Fourth round. Uh, FA Cup third round. Quarterfinals. You do lose out in the EFL Cup semifinal first leg, but then crush Man City in the second leg. And you move on to the final against none other than Liverpool, where you get smacked down 5-1. That is a oh, wow. I mean, you no one, none of these teams have ever done very well against Liverpool, but a 5 1 just shellacking is not nice to see. But they are through to uh, through the Champions League round of 16, Eintracht Frankfurt. But then, where else are you? FA Cup, you continue on. FA Cup semifinals, you lose out to Chelsea 1 to 2, but you do lose out in the second leg of the Eintracht Frankfurt 0 3, and that 2 to 1 win at home does not carry you through, unfortunately. Uh, but again, I mean, overall, you have a lot more wins, which is nice to see, but it's a lot spottier. And then Wolves, I would really not expect a whole lot here. Uh, it looks, I mean, a fantastic August and September, but then an awful October. Uh, you do continue on in the EFL Cup third round. You lose out in the fourth round against West Brom. Uh, third round, FA Cup replay. There you go. FA Cup fourth round, losing out to Cardiff this time, nil two. And then just completely spotty from there on out. You do get uh, some draws, I guess. Newcastle transfers, a lot we've seen already. Ruben Loftus-Cheek, Milan Skriniar, Donny Van de Beek, Kai Kennedy, Gianluca Busio from uh, Venezia, five and a half. That's a new one. Fabian Schar out to Inter. Wigget out to Portsmouth. Eh. 
Tottenham spending some money as usual. Joseph Chitalouin, we've seen Benjamin Dominguez, Tony Weston, Marco Livaja, I think is new, or at least it hasn't been done all that often. 13 and a half from Hodgick split. Uh, and then, yeah, Max Robeson, that's about it. And Wolves bringing only Wilson Manafa in from Porto for 875K. Really not doing a lot of business whatsoever. As usual, I guess. Squad-wise, Newcastle, as always, pause where you want to see it. 7-9-0 for Rodrigo Vilca. One match. That's all he played. But Alexander Isaac, 7-5-7. Miguel Elmarone, 7-2-3. Not too bad. Tottenham squad, a lot, well, I guess Green's more centrally here. 7-2-8 for Harry Kane. 7-2-9 for Marco Lavaggia. So, yeah, pretty nice. And then Wolves. 7-15 for Mateus Nunes. Uh, 7-15, Geddes is not there. 7-12 for Raul Jimenez. Cunha was 7-06. Meh. I mean, for 40-some-odd points, yeah, you don't expect much. Data hub-wise, Newcastle, as you can see, shaky in defense, very good in attack, or at least good in attack. You can see the attacking portion is well above the Premier League average. Dribbles per game, not so much. Uh, but defensively, not so, not doing so well. Tottenham, not much different. Okay defensively, very, or again, good in attack. Uh, some peaks here over the Premier League average, dribbles per game, yet again, not, not there. Uh, you do have more towards the Premier League average in terms of the defense, but still just not good enough. Wolves, shaking defense, good in attack. You can see the attacking not as good as the other two teams. However, you still have some nice peaks above the Premier League average, which is nice. Uh, and then I, it's more roundabout in defending, but still you're you're pretty far off some of the, the defensive pieces of the Premier League averages. So not expecting much dribble-wise or possession-wise, but most goals, Tottenham, Newcastle, and Wolves. Tottenham in second with 83, tied for Liverpool. That's pretty nice. Fewest shots against, nobody. Possession, Tottenham and Wolves in there. Newcastle's not, that's funny. But most triples made, yeah, we don't expect that at all from the Data Hub. Um, none of this really. Tottenham with most tackles, one. Best compass completion, most shots, four. All three teams are in there. And then most points per game. Newcastle and Tottenham, as you would expect, in the top six spots. Most goals, Isaac with 36. Harry Kane with 35. Cunha with 19. Uh, two out of the three beating Holland, but three out of all three coming in top four, which is really nice to see. Do those numbers a lot more quickly this time. Uh, Ruben Loftus-Cheek with most assists. Al Marone, 13 apiece. Uh, and then Kulisevsky, Pe uh, Pedro Neto, and Pedro Porter all in there as well. Most player of the match awards. Isaac with 10. Not too bad. Kerry Kane with 8. Pass completion. Most dribbles made. Uh, you have Lucas Moura and Pedro Neto, but still, the rest of the teams are just d d awful. I mean, are these the only guys making the dribbles? So most shutouts, nothing. Key passes. Trippier's in there. Sarabi is not, though. Uh, most shots, Isaac Kane and Cunha, as you would expect. And then again, as we always finish out, Newcastle, Alexander Isaac with 37 goals in all competitions. Wow. 7-5-7. Seven, 7, 13 assists for El Maron and Ruben Loftus-Cheek. And then Isaac with 10 player of the match awards. That is a fantastic set of numbers. Even if 69 points isn't probably the best that they've seen or that they could get. Still, I mean, third place, yeah, whatever. But all these numbers look fantastic on these guys. 47 goals for Tottenham's Harry Kane. 7-2-8 for Kane, highest average rating. Kulisevsky with 18 assists and 10 player of the match awards again. 47 fantastic goals. That's amazing tally for Harry Kane. Uh, usually he's in the 20s to maybe low 30s, if that, but 47 is just a beast. And as we finish out with Wolves, Cunha with only 20, Nunes with 715, highest average rating, 11 assists for Neto, and three player in the match awards for Jimenez and Cunha. Uh, again, 43 points does not deserve a lot more than what they got. So for Wolves, they really just didn't do very well. Uh, I would take I would take a look at this. No question about that. Getting tops in in both you know assists and goals, um, doing fantastic work there. Newcastle and Tottenham. Again, this would be a great thing to do. You know, see five six times over again to see what the averages are. Because again, 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 again. Liverpool at eighty three points. Man City at seventy seven. Very low point totals for all these teams whatsoever. Uh, but yeah, look at these one two three four teams on thirty nine points. But Everton, unlucky enough, and they do drop down. So anyway, that does it for me. This is the killer 4 3 2 one tactic by Prince. Uh, I am Sefian FM for the Football Manager blog channel saying thank you as always for watching. Take care and enjoy.